live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where people, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and have actual amazing relationships. I'm John Deloney, joined by my great friend, Jade Warshaw, and we are taking your calls on money, life, work, your mental and emotional health, your marriage, whatever you got going on in your life. We may not have a great answer, but we will sit here with you and we will help you figure out the next right step. 888-825-5225. It's 888-825-5225. Let's roll out to the 505 in Albuquerque, New Mexico and talk to Mary. What's up, Mary? Yeah. Hey, it's a pleasure to be part of your program. I have a question for you. Bring it on. I'm so glad that you're with us. What's up? All right. My husband and I applied for a home mortgage, but we pulled out uh, when we realized the house payment was going to be more than half our monthly income. So now we are like traumatized when we think about going into the housing situation, the housing market. We need help. And what should we do? Why are you traumatized? It sounds like you made a really smart move. Well, we did because we figured there's no price on our peace of mind. And so we did make a wise move, but now we're, we're like, okay, now what? Yeah, because you realize you dodged a bullet. You realize what could have almost just happened, right? You're right. Wow, yeah. that's a good way of putting it. You know, look, um, what I try to do, uh, my husband and I have bought two homes together Um and we've tried to get as much information at the jump as possible. So we're out there researching, we're using all of the mortgage calculators. So what I would suggest for the next time going in is uh, use a mortgage calculator and we have a great one. It's how much home can I afford, right? And you can put in the numbers of the homes that you're finding in your area that you think might be the one, right? And then you're using your income and you're looking at what that monthly payment is gonna be. Now, you knew, that in this case, it was way too much, right? You knew 50% was too much. What we'd want yeah. you to get to is um, a mortgage where the payment is no more than 25% of your take-home pay after taxes, all right? It doesn't have to be after uh, medical insurance and after 401k contribution, that sort of thing. Just your take-home pay after taxes. And of course, we want you on a 15-year uh, fixed rate mortgage. Now, here's the other thing, because I'll be honest, I don't think we always talk about this enough, John. Um, you need your down payment. You know, we're looking for five to 20 percent of the down payment. But then you also have to think about things like earnest money, closing costs, moving costs. Moving. There's so much to consider when you're buying a home. Um, take your time. Yeah. That's all I can say. Does that help you at all? Yeah. Take your time. How much time more or less do you think? 50 to 60 years. <laughs> I mean, like, uh, Mary, tell me, tell me, like, you you seem genuinely like rattled. Yeah, what, I am because what? we put down the earnest money, two thousand uh -huh. dollars, and we were excited about it, but we didn't do what I think everything that you're saying, a lot of the research and a lot of the uh, moving costs and the extra costs that we didn't take into consideration. We got emotionally involved. Yeah. Brand new house and we brand new couple. We just got married and we were ready to move in. And then I woke up one morning. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think and you Dave also Ramsey, feel bad because you made the mind. offer and had to rescind it as well. Is there something there? Yeah. We, we lost the $2,000 in earnest money. Hey, that was the best $2,000 you've ever spent. You got Thank lucky. You. you got lucky. Um, I would do, do exactly what Jay did and, and, and it said to do and write this stuff down and probably okay. do it over um, like a grody, ooey gooey, newlywed like breakfast together on a Saturday morning. And let's be all lovey dovey and let's be also clear eyed and say, OK, we already think this is going to cost and this is going to cost and this is going to cost. And then you're going to have to own reality. Here's how much house we can actually buy right now. We had this dream of this house and this is not going to happen, especially not in Albuquerque where prices have gone B-A-N-A-N-A-S. Mm -hmm. But we're going to find that we can afford this house. What if we, let's just rent for a year or we can afford this house. Let's go, let's go get our realtor um, on, on the trail. And that, okay. that actual data, that information combined with you leaning in to your husband, not away from each other right now, because there's this awkward little rift in your marriage right now because he probably wanted to keep on going through it and you said no it helps heal all of that and it will bring down the temperature inside your chest yes so let's just get real information and real data by the way here both jade and i say you not only made the right call you um 
you did what I think is really hard, which is stop a moving train. And most of us are just like, well, I've already had this donut, so my diet is shot for the month, or I missed this morning's workout, so I guess I'll just work out next year. And you stopped halfway and said, no, 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 no. This isn't who I want to be. This is, does, is not how I want to start our marriage. So I want you to hear Jade and I applauding you. Mm. We're super Aww, proud of you. Thank you. What you thank did you wasn't so a failure. Much. What you did was a last second. What are we doing? And you and you did it. You did it. And again, thank this you. is I not. Really this was not a no. You know, I don't want you to think, oh man, we we messed this up. So that means we can't have a house. It's just not yet, right? So you asked John, like, how long is this process going to take? When are we going to get there? And the answer is, when you get there. You'll get there when you get there, when you've got the money saved, when you've got the research under your belt, when you find the right home that meets the criteria, that's when you're ready. It doesn't have to do with interest rates or, you know, when when the economy says it's a good time to buy, right? The good time to buy is when you are financially ready to buy. So. And mm-hmm. to, to clear up um, what may be another question, Mary, my wife and I, we don't live in our dream home. We don't. And our home is mm-hmm. awesome. And our marriage is good. And watching my kids smile every day is awesome. And so I think our obsession with, um, is this perfect? Is this the forever? What about in 10 years? Are we going to, dude, 10 years ago, I was three jobs and two states away from here. Hmm. 10 years is a million years ago. Sit down and do the data right in front of you and say, over the next two to three to five years, we think this is what this might look like for us. This is awesome. You can feel like you've got a lot of pressure on your shoulders. Man, as the great Jay-Z said, just... Brush your shoulders off. Ooh, get that dirt off your shoulders. Get Come off, on, John. <laughs> Let him, does that make sense, Mary? Yes, totally, totally. It makes so much sense because it's based on facts Ayo. and information. And so that's the basis of making good decisions for me. And if you watch the news, <laughs> most people don't make decisions based on facts. And so you are living in rare air. You, you decided to head out on your own. Um, Jade, you're, you uh, have been running the media gauntlet talking to um, people and uh, running live streams. You've been, you've been meeting with people, talking to media folks. What is the pulse there with, with a living in fact, <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, right now, we're, look, John, credit card debt is higher than it's ever been. A trillion dollars. Student loans are coming back. <laughs> a tri- It sounds like you're a kid making a joke. A, a t- 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 trillion dollars. I have to stutter when I say it because it's crazy. Then we've got student loan debt. That's 1.67 trillion, right? <laughs> Most people's payment is somewhere between oh three to $500. That's just for their, you know, federal student loans. And then you got the car payments. People are starting to default on their car payments. This is catching up to us. And then on top of that, we're all saying, yeah, but I want to buy a house too. Something's got to give. You've got to live in the reality of your situation and figure out what you've got to do to solve for it, right? You can't keep things as they are and still get X, Y, Z. You've got to start making changes and doing something different if you want to get something different. With a trillion, with a T. Trillions. Gives me the hemorrhoids. We'll be right back on The Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Go to Blinds.com now and save 50% off selected products. Visit Blinds.com today for more info.
This is The Ramsey Show. I'm John Deloney, joined by Jade Warshaw. We're taking your calls on money and life and relationships and your mental, emotional health, your work, whatever you got going on, 888 5225 The question of the day is brought to you by Neighborly, your hub for home services. Neighborly.com is the place to find reliable help for your home from locally owned businesses like AirServe, Dryer Vent Wizard, Precision Garage Door Service. God, I need them at my house right now. Windy window genie and more for expert help with just about anything you need visit neighborly.com that's right today's question comes from irene in texas Come she on, says irene. hey yeah i like that she says this is probably a long shot in reaching out since i'm sure everyone does but i'm pretty much drowning in debt as embarrassing as it is to say that i'm handling my credit cards car and private student loans using your methods as best as I can. But when it comes to federal student loans, my anxiety kicks in, especially now that the payments will restart again. And by the way, interest starts today. I have about 192,000, an astronomical amount in interest as is part of that sum whew, in student loans. And I don't know where to get the correct info on how to pay it. I feel like everyone has a different take and it's hard to know what move to make so that I don't add any more to the debt. Any help on how to move forward with this is greatly appreciated. I just can't afford 2K payments every month, which is probably what they will want me to pay. All right, John, let's let's get comfortable right here because <laughs> we're going to unpack this. Um, number one, Irene, you're not alone. That's the first thing I want you to understand here is thank you for this question because I you asking this is about to give solutions and answers for a lot of people. So thank you so much for that. Um, 192,000 in federal student loans plus other debt. Obviously you guys know interest starts today with payments starting um, in October, whenever your payment is due in October and she's going to be one of those people. So there's a lot of misinformation out there and it can be confusing. Okay, Irene. So the first thing I want you to do and this for anybody listening, you need to find who's got your loan. Okay, because most of the loan providers that were out there before COVID, they've decided student loan business sucks, we're out. And so your loan has been sold to somebody else. All right. So you need to find who that is, whether it's Moella, whether it's uh, Granite State or whatever that one is called, Great Lakes, all of these different ones. It's, it's no longer Sally Mae, right? There's all these other service providers. So you need to answer your correspondence, right? If you're getting letters in the mail, if you're getting emails, like don't bury your head in the sand open that bad boy up and see what's going on. Call the 1-800 number. And I posted about this on social the other day. Yeah, it, it, you might be on hold for a minute. And this might take a couple of lunch breaks to get this thing done. But uh, don't tap out simply because it's taking longer than you hoped. You need to find out what's going on. All right. Next part to that is you're going to talk to a student loan rep. And they're going to act like they know what's best for you. And I'm telling you right now, they are a customer service expert. They are not a finance or money expert, okay? And I can tell you this, they barely understand what's going on, okay? So when they start saying, oh, we could do a, an ICR plan or an IBR plan or a save plan, or, and they start saying all these things, they're going to suggest the one that they know the most about, okay? Not what's necessarily best for you. So A1 is I want you to be able to make your payment, okay? So when you open up that envelope or you log into the screen and you go, oh, $221, I can do that. If you can do it, great, keep it like that. If you look at that payment and you're like, holy crap, if I do that, we don't get to eat, now is the time to start thinking about, okay, how can I make this minimum payment lower, all right? So that that's the only time, if it's keeping you from eating, lower your payment and get a smaller minimum temporarily. Now, in this case with Irene- Hold on, that means some people are gonna have to sell their house because they bought a house two or three years ago and they owed $300,000 and they thought that it was all gonna go away and it didn't. Yeah. That means some people have to move apartments. What you're saying is not, if you're gonna have to adjust your lifestyle a lot, then see yes. if you can lower the payment. No, no, no. Yes. You want the payment as high as you can possibly get it where you can still make that payment. Well, there's a, there's a piece to that, John. So if you're if you're working a de debt snowball like Irene, mm -hmm. or like Sam and I, for instance, and you've got a bunch of other debts and your student loans, like it's interesting because her her payments are two thousand dollars. My husband and I, our student loan payments alone were two thousand dollars. We could not make those payments, even with a bare bones budget. So what we did and the only way, the only, only, only in big red letters, bold, underlined with lots of exclamation points. Okay, hear me on this. The only way I would entertain 
a payment plan to lower my minimum payment is if I'm intensely working a debt snowball. Because in the debt snowball, if anybody doesn't understand this, you're listing all of your debt smallest to largest, you're making minimum payments on everything, and then your extra money, you need extra money to throw out the smallest debt. Now, in the midst of this, you're working extra jobs, you are not going out to eat, you are not having a life because you're paying off your debt. And if that can help you get leverage the same way we say, hey, lower your uh, your withholding, you know, so you're not getting a tax return. So you have extra money. The same way we say, hey, temporarily pause your 401k contribution to get extra money. All of this stuff, all of this guidance is contingent upon you doing the plan. Because if you're going to lollygag and you're going to kick rocks and be like, ah, well, you know, I'll do a little here, a little there, then you pausing your retirement, you're screwing yourself. You doing an IDR plan, you're screwing yourself. You have to do this with the intent of I am paying off my debt and I'm doing this with intensity and intentionality. And it is not simply to kick the can down the road and hope that 20 to 25 years from now, there's some kind of, you know, bucket of forgiveness. So... And oh, am I supposed to just not go out then? Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, am I supposed to just go like for hikes with on, with the person I'm dating? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Hikes. That's all you can afford. That's all you can afford because at the end of the day, um, Irene, when it comes to this, you get on the phone, you talk to this person. They're going to say, "Hey, why don't you do this plan? Why don't you do that plan?" Or by the way, here's the newest thing: uh, twelve month on ramp. 12 month on ramp says, "Hey, when payments resume in October, if you're not ready to pay." Don't pay. And we'll allow the interest to accrue. Yes, because we're going to get our money. Because again, st federal student loans, they want your payment. They don't want your peace. Okay, so they're going to let that interest accrue. But oh, how nice of them. We just won't tell the credit bureau that you're defaulting. So we're just not going to report it. And for a year, you can go on and let that interest accrue as though we're doing you a favor. That's like a medical doctor saying, you, you know what? We're just going to keep taking your blood tests and putting them in a shredder for a year. You eat however you want. Do what you smoke want. Smoke whatever you want. Drink whatever you want. It's all good. We're just going to put your blood test. You're still going to die. You're still going to die. Still going to die. And let me tell you guys something because I don't think, John, people, I don't think their brain and their heart and their mind will let them accept the fact that they can be free. Mm -hmm. You can pay off these student loans. It's not a myth. It's not mythical. What Irene is talking about, I know that situation. My husband and I had 280000 of student loans. Part of them were federal student loans, a big chunk, and a big chunk were private. Variable interest rates, okay? Like I said before, one of the loans was $192,000, and the payment on it was $900 on that one loan. I'm getting choked up just talking about it because I know how that mess feels. So don't wait around. You have to be free. I don't care if they tell you the interest is not accruing. If they tell you, well, forgive it after 25 years, your body feels that mess. Yeah, so your marriage feels that. When she says, my anxiety kicks in, it should. It should. That's your body telling you you're not safe because you're not. Because you're not. And I've lived it too. Me and Sheila, my okay. wife, lived it. we've both lived it. Say that again. Can, like um, I think we say peace a lot, and mm -hmm. I don't even know that we have a psychology for that anymore. Yeah. Walk people through the back end of this, like what it actually feels like when there's all this tussling going on in Washington, and you just you just keep swiping because it doesn't it apply doesn't to apply you. to you. Yeah. I, look, the goal is to get above the radar, mm -hmm. right? Where you're just flying above. You're like an eagle, man. You you're looking and you're going, what's going on down there? Oh man. Okay. I'm glad I don't have nothing to do with that. That's what it is on the other side of this. On the other side of freedom, you have forgiveness for yourself. For yourself, because so many of you guys feel like, man, I can't believe I let the government trick me. I got swindled into this. And it's like, man, was I was I seriously that dumb? No, you weren't. You made a bad choice. But when you pay off your debt, you get forgiveness and you get peace and you get freedom with your money. That's what this is all about. Not waiting for somebody to be a hero. You're your own hero. Go get your freedom. Get it, Go Irene. Go get your peace. Get it, Irene. In the Republic of Texas, make it happen. We'll be right back on The Ramsey Show. Hey, if you're in over your head with student loans and tired of getting calls from collection agencies, if private student loan debt is taking away your financial peace and you don't see any way out, 
you need Y Refi. They're not a debt settlement company and they're not connected to a bank. Y Refi refinances defaulted private student loans that other places won't touch and gives you a custom loan built for you based on your ability to pay. So when you refinance your private student loan debt with Y Refi, you'll have a payment you can afford with a low fixed interest rate you couldn't get anywhere else to help you stick to your budget and work the debt snowball. And you can save thousands of dollars. To learn more about this custom refinancing option and a lump sum payoff option you could qualify for after 24 months, call 844-2-RAMSEY or go to yrefi.com slash Ramsey. Triple eight eight two five five two two five. This is the Ramsey Show. I'm John Deloney, joined by Jade Warshaw, and we are taking your calls. Let's roll out to D Town, Dallas, Texas, and talk to Bianca. What's up, Bianca? Hi. Thank you so much for taking my call today. Thanks for thanks for calling us. What's up? So I am a 27 year old. I am about fifty thousand dollars in debt. Um, I want to start saving and investing for my future. If and if things are good, buy a house. Uh, sometime soon. Um, what should I do? How do I start planning? I just started listening to your show about two weeks ago. Welcome to our gang. <laughs> we are a bunch of weirdos. <laughs> but yeah. we're happy to have you part of this. We're glad glad you joined us. <laughs> so, hey, Bianca, I love that you have all these goals. I think it's great. I want you to have a house one day. I definitely want you to invest for your future. Um, so I love that you're thinking about this. Um, you're fairly new to the gang, I would say. So I kind of just let's bring it back to the basics and kind of walk through the why of what we do and then talk a little bit about um, what the what of what we do and then talk about why we do that. So if you're new, we walk through the series of seven baby steps, right? So the first baby step is getting a thousand bucks saved, right? Most Americans have no money saved. And so as a result, they depend on their credit cards. And so we want to make sure that's not the case. Let's keep a little money aside And then the second baby step is we're paying off all of our debt except our home mortgage. And the reason we're doing that is because when you have your income freed up, when you have your money back and you're no longer making a bunch of payments, then you actually have the money to do things like invest, save for a down payment on a home, that sort of thing. So we're paying off all of our debt and then we're saving up because a thousand dollars, it got us by, but we need more savings than that. Right. So we're saving up three to six months of expenses. And then it's like, all right, everything's set. I've got this nice cushy emergency fund. I can get a house. If something goes wrong with the house, the AC goes out, I've got money to handle it. I'm not having to go onto credit cards. And if, you know, the car breaks down, I don't have to get a 401k loan. You know what I'm saying? So we're setting Mm -hmm. ourselves up to be able to have savings invest, buy a home um, in the most efficient, uh, safest possible way. Does that make sense? Yeah. So right now, would you not start, would you not begin investing? I wouldn't. Would you hold off on that? Yeah. I would hold off on it. Um, and I'll, I'll be honest, a lot of people are like, oh, clutch my pearls. She told me not to invest. It's only temporary. That's the oldest thing I've ever heard somebody say. What? Clutch my pearls? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an old soul that you're I, I'm, really I'm from, the, I'm from the old school really old soul <laughs> i know um so yeah it's temporary just remember it's temporary we're doing this all with intensity we're doing it quickly and john will tell you most people who walk through this path bianca they're done 12 24 36 months they're finished with their debt how much what's your income by the way so i currently make 105 105 000 a year now wait is it just you just me. Hey, 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 hey. Bianca crushing I, it. I'm excited because if you live on $55,000 this year, you're debt free this year. <laughs> I'm trying to. Um, so just uh, as soon as I started listening to you guys, I cut out all of my subscriptions. And um, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to limit myself to really save up as much as I can 
just because I feel like I've fallen behind. I feel like I should have a lot more saved. I feel like I should should just have a lot more, and, and so I'm, I'm trying to catch up. A very common thing we hear is, I realized I make way too much money to be this broke. Yeah. And you're a single 27, 28-year-old making six figures. Yeah, so think of it this way. All the things that you laid out, I want to pay this debt off, I want to start investing, I want to buy a house. Jade and I 100% want that for you. We just know after millions of people have have walked alongside us over the years, um, there's a, an order to it. And if you do it out of order, um, then things get sideways. Your air conditioner will break. Your transmission will fall out of your car. COVID will happen. And mm-hmm. your five real estate properties that you've leveraged will not have to pay rent. And whatever comes up. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have how many? How much cash do you have? So I have about ten, fifteen thousand saved. You Excellent. you are going to be so puckered up. When we tell you to send fourteen thousand of that to this debt, and you're instantly down to what thirty six thousand, and you'll yeah. have one thousand bucks. And listen, you're gonna feel so angsty, and that's the point. We want you to not feel like you can sit down until you are debt free, mm-hmm. because you're not safe. You make six figures, and you're still not safe. You are one wrong laugh at the wrong joke at work, and your boss tells you to leave. Ooh. And then you lose your house and your car and your food. You see what I'm saying? Your body's doing its mm-hmm. job by not letting you feel comfortable when you owe this kind of money. Okay. And so go down a thousand bucks, dump 14 grand of that 15 towards your debt today. Knock off some of those credit cards in mm-hmm. order of, of least, and you might consider selling your car and buying a Camry to get around Dallas in. Um, whatever you got to do, and you're going to find real fast that you scratch and claw and scratch and claw. You're not going to owe anybody anything. Then you save up that emergency fund where you're your own bank. And then you're off to the races. Yeah. Bianca, when you're 30, you're going to have a house and you're going to be investing and you're going to have been in that rhythm for a while. And you're going to look back on this and go, oh, my God, I'm so glad that I started the day that they told me to start. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> Does that make sense? It does, yeah. No, All right. I appreciate you guys so much. No, thank you so much. Hey, and keep us um, keep us apprised of your journey. Let us know how it goes. The good stuff, the bad stuff, the hard stuff. But um, I love hearing these the, the, the steps along the way. I know mm-hmm. the debt-free screams are the end, but I love hearing these things along the way. Um, let's run out to John in Jacksonville. What's up, John? Hey, guys. What's going on? Thanks for taking the call. We are partying, man. What's up? Hey, so I got a quick question. Um, I'll try to give you the short version of the of our long story, but we basically have um, eighty thousand in savings that we're trying to save for our next uh, home, a larger home in a nicer community. Uh, but we have two vehicles with a total debt of sixty two thousand on those. John. And, well, <laughs> so I kind of know what was coming when I took this call. So <laughs> we still wanted to reach out to you guys. <laughs> So what? my wife's hiding in the other room. She but, should um, be hiding. <laughs> well, so, What's your income, long, John? Long, um, so we're fortunate enough where she's staying home with our, our new son. Okay. Um, the income from me is about 150 a year. Okay. Um, so that's where we're sitting with that. Uh, we had a long story with our, our son getting him, getting him home from the hospital when he was born, but Needless to say, we were just thinking that we obviously know what we need to do with this money instead of saving it and using it for our next step. Mm-hmm. We just really wanted to make sure, talking to y'all, that we know we're the only debt we have is the cars. Here's the yeah. question I would challenge you on. Are yeah. those cars in your driveway? I, and by the way, I, I remember the car that I drove my daughter home from the hospital in. It was an old Prius, and I remember it only because it had it had a crazy ice storm, and I didn't think we were going to make it. I do not remember the car I drove my son home in. I have no recollection of that car. So the question I would have you and your wife ask each other is, are these two cars worth not having a home? Because I do remember the homes we bought our kids home. Right. 
And I know yeah. you make 150 grand, but if you make 150 grand and your wife loves you, who cares if you're driving an old Corolla? Well, let me hit them with another side. Okay. Let's you and me, me and John are going to give you two opposing views. How about that? Ramsey first. <laughs> All right. So, so John is saying, hey, if you want a house, you got 62 in car debt, pay those jokers, you know, sell, uh, sell those jokers and, you, you know, you have the money. I'm looking at this number and I'm going, okay, 150, you got, you know, you got 62,000 in cars, that's probably 30. 30 something each for each of your cars. They probably are about worth what you owe on them. Is that, is that right? Um, like you're not upside down. More. Are you upside no, down on uh, either of them? Uh, no, no. So no. my thought is like, if you love the cars, it's not more than half of your, you know, annual income. If you love the cars, you could keep them, but the sacrifice would be, it's going to take you longer to get your home. So you have to just decide what do you value most? That's what Jay, that's what I would say. Neither is wrong. That's why that's why I love the question. Yeah. I just try to think of my son who's five saying, Daddy, why don't we have a house? And me saying <laughs> Because son, we need a camera. I had this rad <laughs> truck that made me feel tough. And he'd go, but Daddy, can I have a room? So that's just how I look at it. <laughs> but also, I'm not a car guy, so teach his own. But yeah, you, there's not a wrong path here, um, but make it happen. Quick, John. We'll be right back. Hey, Dr. John Deloney here. I'm a huge fan of both meditation and prayer. And good mental health includes slowing down, gaining control of your thoughts, and plugging into something bigger than you. And Hallow makes it easy to start a daily practice of meditation, prayer, and finding peace. Hallow is the number one Bible app in the world, and you can tailor content towards your faith tradition. From scripture readings and prayers to meditation and journaling, Hallow makes it easy to practice prayer, meditate, and build a deeper, more meaningful spiritual life and rediscover true peace. Go to hallow.com slash Ramsey today to get three months of Hallow for free. That's hallow.com slash Ramsey. Triple eight eight two five five two two five. This is the Ramsey Show. If you are new to this gang of weirdos who has decided to take both pills and get out of the matrix and stop letting banks and credit card companies and car dealerships run our lives, if you want to d- dive deeper into the Ramsey baby steps and figure out what in the world we're even talking about, go to RamseySolutions.com and click on the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the next best step for your financial journey based exactly where you are right now. I know it's easy to listen to folks and be like, yeah, but what about that? We got you. Go to RamseySolutions.com and click on Get Started and we'll get you hooked up. All right, let's go out to Denver, Colorado, where it's all legal and talk to Kaylee. What's up, Kaylee? <laughs> What's yeah, up? That's for sure. Hi, thank you both for taking my call today. You bet. How are we doing? Very good. I hope you both are the same. Um, I'm calling because I am wondering if we should make interest-free monthly payments on a home repair or use our emergency fund to partially pay it off. We are in baby step three. We have about thirty or $5,300 saved up, but our actual fully funded emergency fund is around $10,000. Um, but we had a swamp cooler go out, and it actually was nine thousand dollars to get repaired and the company set us up with interest-free payments but now i'm not sure do i just roll this back into like it's debt or do we continue to put into our emergency fund and still just make the monthly payments without any interest let me make sure i understand uh you had ten thousand in your fully funded emergency no we're on baby step three working towards the goal of 10,000. Okay. Oh, okay. So you've got 53. You're, you've only got 53 at this point. Yes, exactly. Got it. And how much is it going to cost to get the repair in total? Well, we had to get it done because we had been putting it off for several years, but it finally started 
gushing water into our basement. And so we've already got it. Payments start this month. Okay, so there's no going back. Dollars. You've already gotten into this. And how yeah, much, what's yeah, the amount? We had to do it. It was starting to ruin our house, our all, our walls, all of it. Shoot, what was the amount? 9000 9000 Ooh, Lord, eh? Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, you're in it now. So yeah, you got to treat it like debt. You got to pay it off. Um, okay. And you're back, you're essentially back in baby step one. Um, yeah, okay. And that sucks. <laughs> But it does. <laughs> it does. And, I, you know, you called in. So I got to I got to whoop you a little bit because I'm like, no, whenever stuff like this comes, guys, uh, we got to take debt off the table. We've got to. Yeah. Yeah. Take it the off the table. Is, we did have it coded last year for and they it was only thirty five hundred dollars last year. We're like, oh, OK, great. So we'll save up to that. And so we finally bit the bowl and I go, like, oh, let's get them out here to fix it. And uh-huh. it ended up being way more than that. Did so, you get more than one, more than one, um, person to look at it? We did. Mm. That was like middle of the road. <laughs> what do you think, John? Um, here, here's, I, I think this is a make or break for you guys. And I'm not saying that being over dramatic, but y'all had this big moment. We're going to get out of debt. We're going to go through these baby steps. And then you had the, you, you got hit in the mouth the first time. And it was, you got hit hard. And um, y'all are going to be dealing with both the fact that you owe $4,700 more than you got and that y'all made an agreement together. And for whatever reason, we had to, had to, had, whatever, mm-hmm. we did it. And so this is one of those make or break moments for, for this journey. And I've just sat with enough people to tell you the first big rattle out of the bag, the, the guy who, you know, I'm never eating sugar again. And then he finds himself with his grandma's cookies headed towards his mouth. Like he's got a, this is a moment, right? So yeah. if I'm you and I am, you're married, right? Yes. Okay. Is your spouse on board? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean. Okay. So no. That's no. It's Not even. It's been a long process. Not to be <laughs> honest, this has been a long process. We've got hit in the mouth actually quite a few times. This is probably maybe like our second or third time getting to the fully funded emergency fund, and then we had to go back. Yeah. So okay, but hold on, hold on. But you don't time, have I think to. For him, it's like it's like yeah, we got there, and then something comes up, and then it's like okay, we have to get back on this again. Okay, but hold on. It's, this is what it's for. Because think about if you didn't have the emergency fund. That's right. You'd have $30,000 yeah. in credit card debt right now. Mm-hmm. Oh, so yeah. oh, people yeah. get frustrated. I just filled it up and then this thing happens. And I just filled it up this thing happens. And I just want to scream, yes, it's exactly what it's for. <laughs> Frustrating. And it won't keep happening unless you are like Tom Hanks in the money pit. Like it won't keep happening. <laughs> but thank God. Thank God you've been doing this work so that every time it shows up, yeah. you, you've got a plan. I would treat this like I would – Lock arms with my spouse, and I would treat this outstanding forty seven hundred bucks like it's on fire. Yeah. Okay. Let's do ninety days. We Uber on the way to work. We Uber on the way home from work. We work on Saturdays. We work on Sundays. Let's go B A N A N A S. Get this out. Yeah. And let's yeah. Because I'm for- definitely feeling it. Like being so many are. times, we're like, okay, we're done with that. We're done with that. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then this pops up, and I'm like, oh, that's oh, that's, that's what I'm saying. I, I want you to fully digest that this is not just a math problem here. This is a we made an agreement and we went backwards. Yeah. And so there's yeah. going to be a shame component to that. Kick that in the teeth by y'all making a berserker attack on this 4,700 bucks. We did it. Yeah. I'm not going to rely on some. HVAC company to float my family. We're going to knock this thing out quick. Okay. okay. See what I'm saying? Yeah. I thought that was going to be the answer. And I just, like I said, it, you know, it's frustrating to go back and go back and go it back. Is. But, it is. but here I say, um, thank God, thank want, God, thank God. I don't want it hanging over our head. And You haven't gone I'm back. Like, you've stayed, you stayed yeah. above water. Okay. But you would be you. at thank the bottom <laughs> of the ocean if you had not had these emergency, had these funds. emergency funds over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. So thank you. Thank you for that uh, confidence booster. (laughs) You know, it's interesting when people set out to walk the baby steps, they set out to pay off their debt. 
you are it's it's countercultural right it's people use credit cards and they use debt and they go on zero in, you know payments with no interest interest for however many months and and that's what people do but when you say i'm not going to live my life like that i'm going to uh give myself credit that we can live on what we make and we can use cash and we don't need credit you meet resistance like that's just part of it. You can't avoid it. And so I like what John said, like you're gonna encounter emergencies. You're gonna have resistance. You're gonna have things that are gonna try to knock you off course. Those shouldn't be a signal of, oh, I must be doing something wrong. I'm making a mistake. It's not working. That's actually a signal that you're doing right because you did, You don't just run to the credit card. That's, you know, break it out of the block of ice, right? In, in the freezer. You didn't just run, you know what I'm saying? That is yeah. a signal that, okay, you're doing things different because you have to start digging deep to find solutions. Do we need to sell the couch? Do I need to sell the lawnmower? What do I need to do to get this money so that I'm not going back to debt? I'm going to win. And debt is always going to try to wrestle you to the mat and get you to tap out. But you've got to you got to do, you know, an old, a, an old high school wrestling move and get back on top and not let debt cause you to tap. OK, this is it. Yeah, thank and, you. And, and let me give it yeah. like you just nailed it. I want to make sure people get the, the, the level here. My little brother sold his dream, 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 five string music man stingray custom base that he had built so that him and his wife could get out of debt. I remember when my wife and I were going and I got rid of my all my Martin acoustics. I got rid, I sold them because, uh -huh. because freedom was more important than stuff. I drove a 1993 Ford F-150 as the dean of students at a law school. And my colleagues would laugh because it was embarrassing, right? Wow. It was a tough truck to sell. And you guys didn't have a mattress for eight years, right? We sold our bath mats at one point. That <laughs> On Facebook Marketplace, somebody paid $6 for our bath mats. Right. So here, here's, I want you to hear us. That's the intensity of the people you're talking to. You can find a friend right now that would tell you, oh, it doesn't matter. If you want to listen to that friend, knock your lights out. But you called us and we're going to tell you the truth. Get this out of your life. Get out of your life. Get out of your life. You are winning even when you feel like you're not. You are. Hey, that's the first hour in the books. Thank you so much to the guys in the booth. Even Will. We're grateful, Will. And Skylar, <laughs> there she is. Thank you, America. We'll be right back on The Ramsey Show. Hey, it's Dr. John Deloney. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Just go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where we talk about your money and your work and your mental and emotional health, pretty much everything. I'm John Deloney, joined by Jade Warshaw, and we're taking your calls on money and work and life and love, all of it, 888-825-5225. It's 888-825-5225. Let's go out to Canada and talk to the one and only Carl. What's up, Carl? Hi there, how are you? Fantastic, how about you? Good, I'm well. Uh, lots of questions, so I'm going to throw them right at you. So Bring them on, man. Bring them on. I'm wondering whether to carry on renting or, air quote, purchase a property. So, essentially, I uh, just got on to Ramsey about a week ago, uh, read the total money makeover in like two days. I'm like, okay, drink the Kool-Aid, let's go. So, <laughs> welcome, to the, <laughs> welcome to the cult. Welcome oh, to the cult. No. Thank you. <laughs> So I'll throw some numbers at you. So basically, uh, I didn't have an emergency fund, so I just made an emergency fund. So I got about five months' worth of emergency now. I got 150000 in savings. Um, my current rent is about just short of $3,000 a month. Um, to purchase something that would be equivalent to what I rent, and to be honest, not even quite as good as what I rent, I would be looking at something around the $750,000 mark. Um, I was looking at purchasing things before I found Ramsey and I was looking at 25 year mortgages cause that's just what people do apparently. And then when mm -hmm. I saw your 15 year kind of recommendation, 
you know, put a few calculations in, it ended up like the mortgage would be like $4,800 a month or something like that. So then uh-huh. it ended up being well over my kind of 25% type thing. What's your income? So I'm wondering, but because, so between me and my wife, we're like the full tax around 130 ish 135 sorry can you tell me what it is monthly it'll help me not have to do as much mental calculation Uh, yeah yeah Uh, so uh, monthly after tax yeah we basically bring in roughly nine thousand dollars okay so yeah that's going to be almost half more than half i'm sorry wow so when i was 20 25 i was like okay it's kind of close and then obviously Mm -hmm. i started listening to you when i was 15 years i was like okay i'm not even close now so yeah because my rent's so high, and like, do I carry on renting and put all that? Like, because it might take me another five years to save up. So the seven hundred fifty thousand home that you're the home that you're looking at that costs seven hundred fifty thousand. What are you assuming that you'll put down on that? The hundred and fifty that you have saved. So the, the hundred. The hundred and fifty. Yeah. Can you not just find a less expensive home? Is there? Is that just it's not? Vancouver's pretty rough. Yeah, there's just not nothing in that area. So yeah. So if I moved out of the city. Uh, which probably isn't really an option right now just because of jobs. Um, But if I did move out of the city, I could knock that down to like 600. But even then it would, uh, like, I would be moving into something that's not as nice. Basically, I locked in my rent. Mm -hmm. Vancouver has a rental um, kind of, you can only put it up so much each year. So I locked in my rent like three years ago during the pandemic. So my 3,000, what I get now is a two-bedroom kind of, big garden like way yeah. nicer than what i would be able to afford i'd be moving in or if i was so to there's move a into piece of that this 600 in this area it'd be one bedroom essentially there's a piece of this that is um a real a real issue and a real struggle right because you mm-hmm. have a family there's a certain amount of space that um you do need in I order need. for it to be worth it to purchase your home right now but then there's also a piece of yeah. it that's like here's what we would like to have also Right. And I've heard you say it's not as nice as. Right. It's not as nice as this. We don't want to live in this area versus yeah. it's going to be a long way. And I, you know, I always remind people and John, feel free to jump in because I think you've purchased more real estate than I have. I know you have. Um, I always have to remind people that real estate's a ladder. And when you get in, mm-hmm. a lot of times we want to get in where we want to be. But that's not the same as getting in at reality. Does that make sense? Like, I'll be honest, the first house Sam and I wanted to purchase, I want. there were a lot of things that I wanted and some things that also, mm-hmm. you know, the market was kind of demanding as well. But you have to look at that and go, okay, but yeah, but what can I afford? Yeah. So <laughs> and where can I afford it? Math doesn't have feelings. So here's my mm-hmm. promise to you, Carl. Let's say you went down today, you got off the phone with us, you told your wife, I'm buying us a house. And you went down to a local bank and you would find a lender. Especially if you said I have a hundred thousand oh, dollars to put yeah. down, you'd find a lender. And you took mm-hmm. out a thirty-year mortgage or twenty-five-year mortgage in Canada, and yeah, your payment was half was half of your take home. Yeah. And then your wife gets yeah. pregnant. Your wife gets laid off. You get promoted, and they say you have to move right away. What I'm telling yeah. you, with I promise you, we've done this so long you would be signing up for what looks like a dream and it would be a nightmare down the road. Mm-hmm. Or I had a, an incredible house that I bought here in, in the woods outside of Nashville, Tennessee, and I had it fully inspected and it was fantastic. And in the last three years, I've replaced the roof and an air conditioner and some sidewalk stuff and the back deck and on and on. And if you have half of your income going to just the bare minimum on a 25, you've changed yourself to a bank for 25 years. Mm -hmm. You change your whole family Mm -hmm. to a bank for 25 years. There is no room for life to happen. And you and I both know life happens, right? It won't be enjoyable at that point. And so where that, where that comes into play, you and your wife start getting short with each other. You don't know why you start sleeping a little bit less and a little bit less and stay a little more time on your phone, a little more time in front of Netflix or whatever you're watching up in Vancouver. And you find yourself slowly Mm -hmm. Um, caving in on yourself, or as the great writer said, you start slowly delving into your quiet life of desperation, all because you chained mm-hmm. yourself to something you could not carry. And so if you said, it's going to take me five more years, I'd say, great. That's when you can afford it. Mm-hmm. 
And so it's not a matter of, I could get it now, but you're right, you could get it now. A bank will give you something because they're going to bundle that loan and sell it to somebody else and they don't own this, they'd have no skin in the backside of this, of this game. Mm-hmm. You, though, have to pay it. And so what we're saying is, yeah, rent, man. Make peace with renting. Mm-hmm. That's just where we happen to be. That's it's not much forever. Money yeah, it's not forever. It's five years or yeah. three years. Or So what if it takes me 10 years? That's the question because I won't. It won't. Pregnant. It won't. So my wife is pregnant, so my our income is going to go down. Our, sa- our ability to save is definitely going to go down. Oh, then then you have to have so, hard conversations about. So we have this a lot. Somebody calls and says, "I'm a I'm a an editor for a magazine in Manhattan. It's been mm-hmm. my dream to live in Manhattan. I'm not leaving, but I make twenty eight thousand dollars a year." And that's when I tell mm-hmm. you, math doesn't have feelings. And mm-hmm. so that's when you have to have hard conversations that my wife and I have had, that Jade and her husband mm-hmm. have had. About where are we going to actually live? I have family that lived in Los Angeles, Mm -hmm. and they lived there for a number Mm -hmm. of years. They loved their careers, but they realized they would never be able to own a home in Los Angeles, making the money that they make in their career. And they had to decide, hey, what do we value most? Do we value our career most? Do we value the city that we live in most? Or do we value the idea of having a home with a yard and a fence? And, and they decided, hey, we value being able to buy a home. And so they moved to Atlanta, outside of Atlanta, Georgia, where they were able to get something that they could afford. And they made that hard choice, and it's been worth it for them. Our culture tells us that that choice that we have to make is our government's fault, is our bank's fault, is our college's fault. It's not. you got to make choices for your family, hard ones. But don't buy something you can't afford. We love you more than that. We'll be right back. Well, you've all played the telephone game. The first person whispers a message to the second person who whispers it to the third and so on around the table until the original message has completely changed. Multiply that confusion by 100 if you run a business with different software systems that don't talk to each other. That's why there's NetSuite by Oracle. In the early days of Ramsey, we were using different systems for all of our business units. We needed one single source for accurate data. NetSuite was the software we used to optimize and take us to the next level. NetSuite gave us the visibility into all of our numbers so that we could communicate across departments and plan ahead better. And as we grew, it scaled with us. NetSuite worked for Ramsey, and it will make a difference for your business too. Join the more than 34,000 customers who trust NetSuite to help make them smarter and make better decisions and level up their operations. To learn more, get a free product tour at netsuite.com slash Ramsey. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. This is The Ramsey Show, 888-825-5225. Listen, I have a brand new book coming out called Building a Non-Anxious Life. If you pre-order today, you'll get 75 bucks in free bonus items. We are bribing you to buy the book early because it helps out with a number of different metrics. And more importantly, the book will be in your mailbox on or before October 3rd, and you'll be ready to read it. And it comes with a free audio book, all those things. Nearly half of the U.S. population reports that their lives are affected by burnout, anxiety, stress, whatever you want to call it. I dumped it all in the same bucket. It's everywhere. But you've heard me say this a million times on the show. I'm going to say it a million more times. Anxiety is not the problem. It's just your body trying to get your attention that the life you are living is not safe. And I don't mean safe like somebody's coming at you with a hatchet, although that might be the case. But you have chained yourself to somebody who is making your life unsafe. You are living in a, in a toxic environment. You are running and running and running you and your family into the ground. And if you're driving down the road, you know exactly what I'm talking about right now. Or if you're sitting at home listening to this as a podcast, you know exactly what I'm talking about right now. And so this book is a, is a plan. This is not me throwing a bunch of theories at you with me and my nerd friends. This is an actual plan that you sit down with your family, you sit down with your friends, and you say, this all ends today. Very similar to Total Money Makeover. It was like, let's sit down and change our money. This is let's sit down and change how our home feels and how our home operates. Let's change everything. 
from the floor to the ceiling. And that's what this book is. If you go to RamseySolutions.com, right now it's 20 bucks, and you'll get a bunch of free stuff, like I said. And pick it up, and it'll be delivered to you on or before the release date. Um, thank you so much. We're Like Jade, we're setting records in the building. It's, it's kind of humbling. It's pretty cool. Um, and uh, it's fun to kind of talk trash with Dave. But um, <laughs> um, RamseySolutions.com to pick it up. I'm really, really grateful. Let's run out to Pensacola, Florida, and talk to the great and powerful Renee. What's up, Renee? Hey, how are you guys doing? Hey, uh, we're good. I am, uh, how are you? Great. I'm I'm 58 years old and have no retirement. What do I do? Ooh, girl. Oh, wow. is, it, is it just you? <laughs> we're just going to jump in the deep end of the pool. Thanks, Look, Renee. I'm not mad at it. Let's, let's yeah, go through the facts. Yeah, it, yeah, it is just me. Okay, yeah. it's just you. What sort of debt do you have? Do you have debt? I do have debt. So right now I have... Uh, <clears throat> 61000 in credit card debt, and then I have a car, um, $33,000 I owe on that, 11000 to the IRS that I make payments on, and then, of course, I have a $9,300 uh, student loan that will be kicking up again here shortly. I am on baby step two, so I'm in my snowball. That's where I'm at. Um, how'd this happen? Can you tell me a little bit about... What got you here? Sure. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you that. I went through a, um, I was a stay at home homeschool mom for several years and went through a horrific divorce. Mm-hmm. And because I was a volunteer firefighter EMT, I went and got a job as a firefighter EMT and had $200,000 worth of debt I was responsible for in the divorce and started making nine fifty an hour. And I had three children relying on me. So, mm-hmm. I've gone through the years, um, you know, went from a firefighter to working into technology, um, raising the kids, getting them one through college, one married. And um, I'm kind of settled into my own place here. Um, I've owned two homes, so I've I've kind of moved up when I went to work for uh, the company I work for now and started at the bottom. I've worked my way up. and I'm making good money. What are you making? What are you making now? Right now, I'm making between 130 to 140 a year with bonus. Very good. And I heard you say that you had two homes. Is that you working, selling one and buying another, or you currently have two homes? So I I have one home now. Uh-huh. I did buy one um, in Colorado and sold that and moved home to Florida. Okay, and. The home that you have now in Florida, what you know, what do you owe on it? Tell me more about that. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I just bought this home um, just a little under two years ago. So mm-hmm. I owe three eighteen on this home. Uh huh. And what's it worth? Um, it's worth right now market value is between three fifty three eighty is what they're saying. Okay. Now, sorry, I'm about to ask you just rapid fire questions because I want to make sure I understand everything. Um, sure. Can you tell me your monthly take home pay after taxes? Yeah, you bet. Stand by. Um, it is $7,784. Good. And can you tell me what your mortgage payment is that comes out every month? Yeah, my, yep, my mortgage payment is uh, $2,072. Okay. Um, 2072. All right. It's very close. Um, all right. You got a mess, but you've got a decent size shovel. Actually, you've got a pretty good size shovel. You got about $125,000 of debt. Okay. Um, of course, you know, right. baby step two, we're paying off everything except the mortgage. Um, right. and you, you're making about 130, 140. It's just you now. Kids are moved on. They're in college. What w- and oh, they're graduated? They're yeah. yeah, they're they're yeah. way into yeah. life. So, what would it just look like? You living on half of what you earn. You're living on beans and rice, like Dave would say, beans and rice, rice and beans, living on nothing, and you're spending the next two years paying off one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars of debt. The next two and a half years, getting yeah. after it. I mean, that's yeah, really definitely. what it is. I mean, yeah. So that's my plan, right? Is to be debt free by twenty twenty-six. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but there's a couple other things that I'm looking at, right? So <clears throat> I have this career. It's it's a career. Um, but what I really want to do is change careers. So I'm looking at getting in, getting my real estate associate license. 
Um, I've already taken the class. I'm getting ready to go uh, take the test um, to get my state license. And then I wanted to kind of continue my career, do real estate part-time until after two years where I can get my broker license and then move into property management and actually be free to kind of move out of the corporate career and into a different career. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But in this case, you need to maintain your income or higher while you do all of that. Right. That's that would be my only caveat to that. I mean, I'm not mad at any of that as long as you're maintaining your income and higher as you're making that transition. Um, And then, of course, the quick I mean, here's the thing. The quicker we get out of baby step two, the quicker we're getting that emergency fund, the quicker we can start investing for the future. Because here's the thing, getting out of debt, that's just thing one, right? You've got a whole future ahead of you. You're going to be working for a while because I want you to retire with paid for home, right? And once you get this debt cleared, you might have to take a look at that. I'm just going to be honest. You might have to take an honest look at that situation. I don't really know. Um, And in Florida, it would be a condo. It would be something that was less expensive than that to get you to still mm-hmm. have ownership, but to have a less, you know, uh, less amount of money tied up to where you can also start investing more. I, you're going to have to at some point have a little bit more of an om- honest conversation, but it's all going to depend on how quickly you get this debt cleared. So Renee, let me, let me say this. Um, sure. My guess is you spent a long time towards the end of your marriage. You spent a long time after your marriage cleaning up messes, running around, doing all this stuff. And you had this one day, this one day, this is going to, one day, this is going to, one day, this is going to, yeah. one day I'm gonna have that house. One day I'm gonna do whatever the crap I want to do. Cause I'm sick of paying off somebody else's debt, sick of raising these kids by myself on and on and on. And I'm saying this cause I love you, Renee, you are 58 and you're broke. You make an incredible salary and you owe $125,000 and you went and bought a three hundred fifty dollars to $400,000 home. And I want I more than anything, I want you to have that big home with a pool and a, and, a, and a seaside view. I want all that for you. But it might be that you can just afford a condo. Mm-hmm. And I'd much rather you be 65 or 72 and have a paid for condo. And then you're thinking about re- doing real estate on the side when you want, because you wrote out a six figure job for 15 years, even though you didn't love mm. it. I know you want these other things, but I don't want you to lose sight of reality. Math does not care about your feelings. And I hate to say that, but it doesn't. We want this for you. Get out of debt as soon as you possibly can. By the way, sell that car, get something cheaper and put that IRS debt first. Those are your action items. Hey guys, being free to make your own medical decisions is a big deal these days. Christian Healthcare Ministries gives members the freedom to choose the doctors and providers they want without the frustration of worrying about networks and with no waiting period to join. It's a membership-based nonprofit ministry where hundreds of thousands of Christians share funds to pay for and pray for each other's medical bills. For over 40 years, CHM has helped families living across all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Check out more today at chministries.org slash budget. This is The Ramsey Show, 888-825-5225. I'm John Deloney, joined by Jade Warshaw. Listen, if you are totally frustrated by, like Jade and I were talking in an earlier segment, the trillions of dollars we owe in student loans and credit card, or the way Congress spends money, or the way your neighbors are, whatever, whatever, a no-cost way, costs nothing, that you can help everybody in your community out and beyond, is to just like or um, subscribe to the show. If you're listening to, if you're watching this on YouTube, just hit the subscribe button. Um, whatever device you are, 
leave a five star review, click and like, whatever whatever the thing is on your device. Because the more people that do that, it kicks up in the algorithms and it puts it in front of people who are Googling in the middle of the night, I can't breathe, how do I pay off this debt? Or what do I do about student loans? Or my credit card's out of control. And the more you just like the show, it kicks it up more in the algorithms and it puts the show in front of people who are hurting, who need it. And this is the way we're going to spread this message. We are not going to put the Ramsey name on on football stadiums. We're going to continue to be grassroots and put it up in front of hurting people in the middle of the night on their computer screens or in their podcast feed. And that's how we're going to change the world. So just take a second and cost anything. It's a way to help change everything for our communities. Thank you so, so much for those of you who are doing that. Let's run out to Dallas, Texas and talk to Nicholas. What's up? Great and powerful Nicholas. Hey, what's up, John? How are you doing? Doing great, man. How are you? I'm doing great, doing great. Glad to talk to you guys. You too, man. What's up? Yeah, hey, um, I just had a quick question. Um, basically, all I wanted to know was if I should pay more towards my mortgage or if I should um, hold off on that and uh, save for my second baby, me and my wife's second baby. Ooh, congrats on the second baby. That's cool. Yeah, so thank you, thank you. I'm just making the assumption that uh, you have three to six months saved. I'm making the assumption that you are investing 15% during this process. <laughs> You're so much better than me. I was making the assumption that um, your wife said, now that baby two is coming, we're getting a house. Oh, no, no. Yeah, we, we, uh, yeah we've had a, this house for since uh, January of this year. And yes, I'm uh, out of debt and saving 15% and um, forgot the other one. Uh, oh, the yeah, three to six, six months expenses. Yeah. Do you have three months yes. or six months? Yes. Oh, oh, three months. Three months. Okay. Um, what I would do is, yeah, I'd probably pull back and just save up a pile of cash. Keep a bunch of money there for sure. Make sure you have enough to cover your deductible because you're at least going to hit that with this baby. And then, yeah, just go ahead and pile it up when baby gets here and the baby is healthy and beautiful and all those warm and snuggly, cuddly things that babies are. You can just take that big chunk of money and throw it at the mortgage. And uh, that's going to feel pretty great, I think. What that's do you what think? I would do. Yeah. That's, okay. that's, a, that's a pretty easy thing. You don't lose either way. No. Nothing lost. Right. Matter of fact, you just get a lot of peace. It's always peaceful knowing that you're sitting on a big chunk of money, you know? Right. Yeah, and uh, the the main reason I was asking was because um, even if we pay the extra $300, we uh, a lot of the money that we're going to save, we won't need immediately after the baby is born. Mm -hmm. You know, just like the hospital bills, it's going to come a little while after the, the baby is born and all that. So I thought yeah. maybe we could just save what we needed um, for whenever the baby is actually here. You know, like, I would actually flip um, that around, dude, and I would just sit stuff. down with the hospital, and I would say, "Can I get a statement on on uh, uh, a statement up front?" And right, okay, almost all of them will give you a statement up front, and you can ask for the cash payout. And I think on one of my kids, we did the cash payout because it was cheaper to do that than our deductible was going to be on our insurance plan. Hmm. That's interesting. Really? Okay. So walking in okay. and say, could be, they get stiffed a lot. So if you walk in and say, if I write you a check for this birth, assuming that, you know, the baby doesn't end up in, in right. some sort of NICU or something like that. Right. Um, right. But just a traditional, um, you know, delivery and mother care and aftercare and all that. What's the check? Wait, I just learned something. They'll give you a number. I didn't know you could do that. They love having a check. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Okay, so I would try me. that. I would not. Here's here's what I want to avoid. I don't want to just putter along and wait for these bills to just trickle into our house. Yeah, and you don't right. want to have to use your emergency fund for this because it's technically it's not, not an emergency. Yeah. You know it's coming. So save up your own right. cash. I love John's idea. Anything that's going to get this done cheaper and with less of a unknown. It's the intentionality. Yeah, that's right. I like that. Yeah. yeah. So good for okay. you, man. Congratulations. We'll be cheering you on. Mm -hmm. uh, when this baby's born, healthy and beautiful and wonderful, send us a, uh, a photo and um, we'll see if we can post it up there. We're proud of you, brother. We're mm -hmm. proud of you. All right, mm. let's go out to Green Bay, where Aaron Rodgers just left and talk to Bailey. What's up, Bailey? <laughs> that was kind of a Hi, dig. My bad. Guys? Good. How are you? Good. Thanks for taking my call. Of course. What's up? All right. 
So, um, my husband and I, we've been debt free for about three years and we paid off our student loans Whoop. shortly before COVID. <laughs> uh, but when the Biden student loan relief refund came out, we thought, well, maybe we'll apply for the $10,000 refund. Ah. And then if it goes through, we'll cash <laughs> the check. If it doesn't go through, we'll just tear the check up. So we have a check for $10,000 that we never cashed and we do not plan to. Yeah. And uh, now. Save it for the next toilet paper shortage. Yeah, right. (laughs) Well, now the loan provider that the student loans were originally with, they said that we owe $10,000 regardless of if we cash the check or not. Well, yeah, because you got a refund on your payments. Even though we never cashed it? Yeah, you got the refund on your pay. It's basically, let's. It's off their books. To to make it simple, let's say your loan was $10,000 and you paid it off. And then Biden said, oh, we're going to give you forgiveness. So you went and said, hey, I want my money back because Biden's about to clear this. So they gave you $10,000 back. You held on to it, waiting for Biden to clear the forgiveness. He didn't. So unless you want to owe $10,000, you need to give them back their check. Does that make sense? Or did I miss something on what you were saying? Well, does that mean that we should cash the check and then just take the cash and put it right back into the loan? Yeah, I mean, if they wrote the check to you, they wrote the check to you. So you need to, you know, liquefy that money and then digitize that money and give them their payment online. My guess is there is a separate wing of this whatever chaos is in there that sends out the refund checks. And once that refund check goes out, it goes on a balance sheet and gets sent to another department. And there's another department just going down saying 10,000, 10,000, 10,000. And you're probably one of about six people out of 40 million people that didn't cash that check (laughs) and go buy a car with it. And so you may end up as silly as this is, you may end up cashing this check to turn around and write them a check right back. Well, let me ask you this. The check isn't expired, is it? It's not. Okay. But it expires in about a month. <laughs> you, girl, you get in the car right now. <laughs> Go to the bank. You put it, you know, I think you can do it online now, but cash that check because this is what I don't trust. Because student loan, look, I don't trust them because if that check expires, they're going to be like, well, you cash the check. We don't have a record of it. Duh, 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 duh. You, and you, will, you will owe $10,000 and you won't have the money to pay it. So t- today, please. So oh, the, wild. The, last, the last thing, I, I have enough hesitancy in my voice because I'm not looking at this check and I haven't heard of this problem. I may call the servicer back who is telling you this and say, and you tell them, I'm holding a paper check that you tell me I owe you. So I'm about to go to the, to the bank, cash this, put it in my account and write you a $10,000 check. Is that correct? And they will probably just say, you owe us $10,000, like a, like a yeah. computerized program. But I would check with them to make sure or ask them, is there two different departments here? Because I never cashed this check. My guess is they just have a record that you were written a check and they want their money back. They don't have the deposits record. Mm-hmm. That's my guess. Sure. That and, makes sense. Yeah. And we did a call earlier and they did basically say that like, well, okay. you're liable for it, whether you cash it or not. That's right. That's well, yeah, because for them, they just saw the money go out. You said you wanted forgiveness when you checked the box and the rest was it, it truly was on you to either hold on to that money or spend it like so many other people did. So good on you for not spending the money. But now it's time to get down to the bank, get that money and give it back to your student loan service provider so you can be free once and for all. And I want to applaud Washington for spending our tax dollars wisely once again. <laughs> Way to go, guys. dollars a month. Jeez. It's a competitive home buying market, but there's a way you can get an edge. Churchill Mortgage works with you to understand your budget and your goals. And the Churchill Mortgage Home Buyer Edge offers you fast pre-approval and a secured interest rate. Plus, Churchill has bumped up their seller guarantee to $10,000, giving your offer the best chance of being accepted and helping you win in today's market. Go to churchillmortgage.com today to learn more.
This is the Ramsey Show. Listen to this. Smart Conference is a weekend event with Dave, Rachel, me, Jade, George Camel, Ken Coleman in Chicago, Illinois on September 15th and 16th. It's going to be a party. Dedicate a weekend to be focused and dialed in on achieving your goals in money, emotional health, mental health, career, and relationships. School has started and you already all of your good intentions are already out the window and it has turned into a blender without a top on. <laughs> this is a great weekend to go and control alt delete and reset and not just emotionally, not just rah rah, but with some actual plans to go out and change your life. It's a day and a half event packed with motivation, information, and inspiration. That's a lot of Ooh, Asians. That's a Ken Coleman. That is Ken Coleman all day. <laughs> Smart Conference Weekend is our biggest event of the year. Tickets start at 99 bucks, and there's a limited limited ticket upgrades available that include meet and greets. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash events to get your tickets. RamseySolutions.com slash events. All of us in one place at the same time. It is a blast. It's a blast. All right, let's run out to Oklahoma City, or as Texans call it, Southern Canada, and talk to Pam. What's what? up, Pam? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, guys. Wow. How I you doing? Pam, I almost broke into my... Oklahoma where the wind comes. There you go. <laughs> What's up? Oh, not much. I just have a quick question that my husband and I are kind of disagreeing about. So yes. I need your input. We will solve this for your okay. marriage. Bring it. <laughs> okay, thanks. Okay, so last year we bought a new truck and we are we are debt free, um, including two homes and all of our cars Woo-hoo. except for this one. And we're <laughs> hold on, you're we're like, um, I'm in, 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 I am super fast runner, except I'm very slow. <laughs> it's like, I am debt free, except I'm not debt free and I owe on a truck. How much do you owe on well, this see, truck? That's, that's what bothers me is because I can't say that now because I have this truck, but here's the deal. It's free interest, 0% interest. I don't okay, care. For three years. Yes. So... My question is, is do we go ahead and just pay it off and then I can actually say I'm debt free or do we continue it until it pays off, which would be about another two years? How much is the truck? Six thousand more. How much is the loan? How much do the loan is? It was initially like 40 something thousand, but now it's twenty six thousand. Twenty six. Help me with this, Pam. Help me with this. You'll have two paid for homes. Yeah. How much money do you have saved? Hold on. Before that. How could y'all do this to yourselves? Y'all made a promise and a commitment to yourselves that we are going to be different, live a different way. What happened? Right. Well, you know how those dealerships talk to you and say, hey, we can do this. No, uh, not Jade and I. We know that. <laughs> we just leave. Okay. Why didn't you? Wait, 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 wait. wait. Um, that's, hey, that's the same thing. Like, how did you cheat on her? And he's like, well, you know how them women yeah. talk to you. No, I'm just, you, you look, 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 you walked into the dealership. <laughs> no, they didn't come get you at your house. Okay. <laughs> you walked in without the cash. If you walk into the dealership without a cat, without the cash and you're like, mm, I'm just going to look around. They're going <laughs> to sell you. Okay. These look, I tell people all the time, man, willpower s willpower in some ways is punks because if the cookies are sitting on the desk you're gonna eat I'm gonna them eat one i'm gonna eat a bunch of them exactly you know what i'm saying well, and that's what, what happened to you I, pam yeah i know i know <laughs> so here's the deal he's saying you know why not why tie up the money that's in the bank let it continue to draw interest it's already tied up just that's a that's a that's a straw man's it, argument yeah. it, it, it's you have you have you're either going to be tied up to a bank or you're mm-hmm. going to be tied up to a car dealership. You're already tied. That's not the yeah. that that is a that's a false that's a false truth. I know okay. you've got some money laying around, Pam. How much money do you have laying around? Uh, you mean liquid? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like in your savings, anything that's not retirement money. Okay. Um, about four hundred and fifty thousand. Good God, on a stick with a pony! What are you talking about? Pay it off right now. Okay. Today. Gosh. Pay it off. Okay. You know. Uh, That's what I want to do. You know. No. You have $400,000 in cash. I thought you were going to say like, well, you know, we're really struggling. Y'all no. are millionaires. To, to quote Neil Young. 
today. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Today. Pay it off today. Pam, listen, <laughs> tell your husband seen. that A, he needs to get a better calculator. <laughs> B, that y'all made a commitment that y'all were going to be debt free millionaires and that you're just playing with fire and playing with fire and you're playing with fire. And, and here's, <laughs> here's all seriousness this is the moment when everything is perfect and somebody gets sick. This is the moment yeah. when everything happens and somebody loses their job or the market goes down and you're holding this thing that was no big deal and mm-hmm. suddenly it's a big deal. Yeah. And you're making yeah. it a big deal because, you know, it's got no interest here. We can get 4% in our high yield savings account. Or yeah. we can... There's a 4% sleep tax on you. I can hear it. Right. What, what do you mean? I mean, it's costing you your 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 sleep at night. The paltry amount of money oh, you're oh, going to oh. make over two okay. years in a high yield savings account on twenty six thousand dollars is almost nothing, and it's costing you way more every moment okay. you wake up. And the first thing you think is, I can't believe we went back into debt. Well, yeah, because yeah, y- yeah. you guys said you were going to live one way, you chose not to, and the thing is, you weren't even backed into a corner. No, it you was got, just you, a, got, you got no, outplayed we by a car dealer. Yeah, Come like, on. and you've got the money. Hey. Here's what I want you to walk away from this. You guys need to be confident in your choices and what you know to do. You guys are debt free. You've got homes, paid for homes, paid for cars, $450,000 in liquid cash. You, No one tells you guys what to do. All right. You yeah. tell them what you're going to yeah. do. And in this yeah, case, there you go. You know what I'm saying? In this yeah. case, you're going to go down there. You're going to pay this off. I am going to correct myself and say Neil Diamond instead of Neil Young. <laughs> and you are going to be debt free. By the end of this call, you're going to get off here, yep. you're going to call them, pay it off, and you're going to feel so good because you're going to stand your ground and you're never going back into debt again, right? Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah. Love that. Mm-hmm. Are you going to really I do this, Pam? Yeah, I know. I really will. Trust me. <laughs> I'll get off this phone and I will tell him what you said and then we will go pay it off. Let's do it. If you want to have some fun, just um, do the quick calculation real quick. Four percent on twenty six thousand dollars over oh, twenty four months. It's and put that number down in front of him and tell him mm-hmm. a wife with peace in her heart is worth more than this dollar amount. I know that's yeah. Right. yeah. A wife that will love you and not wake up every day wanting to hit you with the exact truck that you took a loan out on, <laughs> like is worth more than this dollar amount. And it just yeah. make it make it very very real. Yeah. That's true. That, that sounds cool? good. I think I'll do that. And let, let's like for everybody listening who's kind of rolling their eyes, mathematically, your husband's right. It's free money. That math makes sense. And if this was a mm-hmm. show about math, it would be a 14 second show. This is a show about freedom. Mm-hmm. And we're not talking yep. about math. He made a good math move. You mean I can borrow money for the X number of years for free for nothing? And I can make a little mm-hmm. bit of pocket change over here in a high yield savings account on the side? Great. That's a good math problem. But it doesn't take into account the wife that is saying, hey, this is not who we are. Mm-hmm. This is this is not who we said we we're going to be. We were going to be a couple who is free. No, like I love that. We mm-hmm. say that, Jade. Nobody tells Pam and company what to do. Nobody. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Except for, you know how them car dealers are. <laughs> Come on, Pam. A word to the wise. I just, you know, you can't put yourself in a situation to be tempted like that. Mm. You go to the car dealership just to look around. <laughs> I'm just browsing. They're trained. They right? are trained karate experts. They will karate you. <sighs> well, you no I mean, it's like, it's like going to sit in the bar when you said you're not going to drink, yes. right? You can't put yourself in these situations and then be like, I'm going to willpower my way out. Like you're just, why? It's too Whenever much Whenever I have one of my like no candy promises to myself, I can't walk down the aisle. Don't be- do it. Because I'm not trustworthy yeah. in those moments when it comes to candy. So yes, Pam. Take we- the temptation we're away. with you. Um, you win the argument. Pam won, husband zero. But remember this too, (laughs) if you win and he loses, you both lose. So make this decision together. It's another hour of the books here on The Ramsey Show. We're so grateful that you have been with us. We'll be right back. What's 
up, guys? It's Jade. Look, if you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey Baby Steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. That's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that is meaningful, that they love, and to improve and develop relationships. I'm John Deloney, joined by Jade Warshaw, and we are taking your calls on money and marriage, life, work, all of it. 888-825-5225. It's 888-825-5225. Give us a buzz, and we will. We may not know the answer, but we will sit with you and figure it out. Let's go out to Austin, Texas, and talk to Kendra in the five one two. What's up, Kendra? Hey, I'm just hanging out. What's up, guys? We're just hanging out too. How can we help? <laughs> so, fifteen years ago, uh, my husband and I go to get married, and he is very adamant. He does not want to combine funds. Absolutely not. We're going to split everything fifty fifty from our separate accounts. So, okay, great. Now, 15 years later, I now make three times his income. I've worked really hard to get myself out of debt. And uh, now he wants to combine funds. Mm. And Mm. I'm really struggling with accepting that after I've put in all the hard work and time to say, okay. All right. Can I, how honest can I be with you? As honest as you want. This is not the main issue in your marriage. And you know that. And your marriage is on real thin ice. True or false? Yeah. True. True. Very true. This is a periphery issue that's way outside. The yeah. the um, contempt with which you're talking about your husband tells me there's way bigger issues going on here. Mm-hmm. Fair? Yeah. Money will take care of itself. Joining finances is something we, like, I, I, I can't wrap my head around making a kid and not trusting my spouse, like making a human with my wife, but not mm-hmm. trusting her enough to share accounts. I can't wrap my head around that. So we do tell people, man, if y'all want to be unified, join accounts. This isn't that situation yet. That kind of stuff often takes care of itself. Not always, but often you guys got bigger fish. Tell mm-hmm. me what's going on, man. I honestly don't know. I think, um, I just kept trying to like, we had goals and I kept trying to reach them and, I just but it shouldn't like I be I. It should be we kept trying to reach them. Yeah. No, it, it felt really alone, I would say. It's always been almost a roommate. Like, we live mm-hmm. here and we have we just live. That's the, single most, that's the single most used word I hear behind closed doors sitting with couples. We're roommates. Mm-hmm. Or they laugh and try to chuckle the, the tears away and say like, we're Mike, Michael Scott and Jim when we are co-managers of our household, <laughs> right? But that's about it. Sure. There's no intimacy. There's no, we're not both working towards this goal out there that we're going to go get. It is, I'm going to do my stuff. I'll get my report turned in on time. He didn't do his report on time and now I got to do his, right. his work. That is, I mean, that is a recipe for resentment and a relationship to end up in ash. Mm-hmm. If it's not there already. Yeah. And this is the moment when somebody at work is hilarious and they text you a meme and you text back and then they text back and then you text back. And then a few days later, you're turning your phone over when your husband walks in the room or vice versa. Mm. That's this moment right now. If, if it's not already fair. Sure. It's not fair. I know. I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. But maybe. Right. So right. Um, 15 I, years ago, yeah. I'm just curious, 15 years ago, did you want to combine money? And it was just him that was like, no. Or were you like, I'm yeah. good with being separate? No, um, I wanted to. But at the same time, um, I came from nothing at the time I was in school. I had a car payment because I was an idiot at 18, bought a brand new car. Um, so I was like, you know what? I totally get it. I'll, I'll pay my half. Um, I'm responsible for myself. Fine. Um, so is he, is he just his, a deadbeat? Why do you resent him so much? No. Okay, let me ask this. You don't like him. Why? I, I don't know. Is he controlling? I, him. I know you love him. I know. I don't question yeah, that, judgmental but you don't more, like him. Um, I think he doesn't understand. He was 
born more privileged, which is great. Uh, but he does, he discounts the hard work that everybody else has to put in. And so now that I'm somewhere he's not, it's, oh, well, now this is part mine and we've earned it. And it's like, well, no, you didn't come to school with me. You didn't take care of the house while I was gone. Oh, I, know. Mm. I did all of this. Yeah, y'all are in a mess, man. Um, y'all need to make an appointment with the marriage counselor by the end of next week. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I need you to be honest and strong and bold. As strong as you are presenting to us right now, mm-hmm. you need to be that strong in the therapy session and say those words out loud that you just said here. That's right. Otherwise, that's just going to fester and grow. I mean, it already has. It already has. We hear it. You don't like him. You think he is a scam. He is like a mooch off of you. And you think over the last 15 years, you've worked harder than him. And his life has been easier than yours. And he just doesn't understand how hard work is. That might be 100% true. And it might not be. And the reality is it doesn't matter because you believe it. And you cannot have mm-hmm. intimacy if you are one-upping or one-downing your spouse all the time and he might be doing the exact same thing with you and maybe he is a total mooch just feet up netflix on you know tall boy in his hand waiting on mama to bring home the paycheck and suddenly this is all ours maybe that's him i think it was in the beginning he viewed himself up here Mm -hmm. and she needed to Mm -hmm. reach that standard right and then when she blew past that standard whatever standard he created and she accepted then it's like, oh, well, wait a minute. Now I get to now. Now it's enough, and now I want to be part of it. And now she's. It's almost like now you're doing the same thing he did in the beginning. That's, that's, the I tables mean, turned. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I don't want that. I, I really, genuinely am trying to live for a mm-hmm. more godly relationship, a godly marriage. But I just can't get over the frustration and anger. Yeah. So it, of, it, even in the conversation now, it's not. Mm-hmm. I want us to be one. I want us to enjoy all of this together and work hard to you know get better. It's. Well, now you make more than me, so I don't have to worry about you spending all of my money. Oof, right. Well, that's not yeah. trust. That's not no, commitment. No, that's not that's a marriage. Just, mm-hmm. That's not a marriage. Yeah. That's not even a good friend. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. not even a good buddy. There's Remember back in, like, high school, there's always that one guy that's like, no, nah, bro, you owe me 436 because I got the Wendy's combo last time. That, just <laughs> that annoying guy. And then there's also yeah. that other buddy that's like, no, dude, I got it. No, I got it. I got it. And the fist fights were almost who was going to pay, not who wasn't. Like, that's marriage. Yeah. That's marriage. Um. <laughs> So the great Esther Perel talks about, gave a very beautiful, elegant picture that I want you to hold tight. Okay. Here's the picture. Mm -hmm. It was talking, she was talking about a couple that had, um, one of them had cheated on the other one. And she said, the most damaging thing is couples all, whenever something like that happens, where there's a fracture in the relationship, they always want to go back to what was. Remember when, Mm -hmm. right? And she gives a very beautiful picture where she says, You could not go on September 12th, the day after the Twin Towers fell, and sweep up all the glass and steel and wood and all of that mess and use those same materials and rebuild the towers. They fell. They fell. You have two choices. You let them sit and let nature take it back over, or you get some professionals in there, you excavate it, you create something new. So I want to tell you, the relationship that y'all have had is over. Your choice now is, do we walk away or do we work together and do whatever it takes to build something new? Get in with a marriage therapist ASAP. Stay on the line. I'm going to hook you up with BetterHelp. That will help you all get in. I'll give you three free months to just get started. Call somebody today. Your marriage is in crisis. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is The Ramsey Show. I'm John Deloney, joined by Jade Warshaw. We're taking your calls on money and life. 888-825-5225. Let's go out to Rachel in Kansas City. What is up, Rachel? Hello, can you hear me? Rachel! Yeah, we got you. What's up? Hey, um, 
So I'm 31 and my husband's 29 and we have a 10 month old and we're praying for more and we have some assets and we wanted to know if we should just update our will. You have some what? The trust. Assets. We have some assets. Ah, like very good. Okay. Money. Much better. Assets. Much better. Uh, sorry. Yes. Assets. Assets. Sorry. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Assets. Yep. Okay. Go ahead. So I was going to say. we update our will. Okay. Or if we should go with a trust and if we do a trust, what kind and what's like a reasonable amount to pay a lawyer. And we just want to set up our baby for success and be a blessing, not a burden to um, her guardians. Yeah. I think that probably both a will is good to just um, make sure that you have that initial setting there. But whenever you're dealing with a child, uh, I would involve a trust because let's just say you've got, you know, a hundred thousand dollars in investments and you've got a home and God forbid something were to happen to you and your husband you wouldn't want an 18 year old to get Mm -hmm. a bunch of money all at once. Right. Plus life insurance, plus Mm -hmm. life insurance. And so with a trust, uh, it's a living document. So it's, it grows with your family. It grows with your kids. And so with the trust, you could say, Hey, here's how we want to space that out. We want them to get this at age 18. We want them to get this. And you can uh, differentiate all of that. Whereas a will, it's kind of just all at once. It happens one time and that's it. You go through probate, that's it. And so that's, I would suggest that I'd suggest getting with a lawyer. It's going to be kind of expensive, but nothing that you can't handle if you plan for it. Yeah. And I don't even think- do you have a, do you have a, how much you think that that should cost? Cause we've talked with one and then we were like, eh, we'll put it on the back burner. But now I feel like it's a little bit more of something. The, the would, last time um, I talked to somebody about a trust, it was about 2,500 bucks, mm-hmm. but it was for a specific okay. real estate transaction. So I don't know if that's making your entire- Will, um, I was working at a law school at the time, so I had a colleague that hooked me up in, in a pretty dramatic fashion. So um, yeah. that's like a super, super lucky there. But when I talked to with with Sam and I and ours, it was about double that, about around five thousand. Mm-hmm. Um, and I recently spoke to someone who theirs was even more, more than that. Okay. So I think it just depends on what's going on in your situation, everything that's going to go into the trust, all of that sort of thing. So I would just get with a a lawyer and uh, mm-hmm. start walking through that process and price it out. I mean, you're interviewing these people, so you don't have to go with the first person that raises their hand. But in the meantime, mm-hmm. Rachel, um, it's super mm-hmm. important. Um, make sure you have a will of some sort. And we, we partner with Mama Bear Wills um, and we'll put a link in the show notes there for Mama Bear Wills. Um, but get something in writing. Which is super important. Yeah, that's the first step. Do you guys have any sort of suggestions on what you would do for dis- disbursements? The estate would be about two and a half million. Um, and so we'd want to step that through in a way that would be responsible. Yeah. You know, Dave always says this, and I agree. Um, you stipulate it in a way that they're living their life uh, according to guidelines that you have set and talked with them about and so that they understand. So uh, you want to make sure, you know, whatever whatever your clause is, hey, if you're going to get this money, you can't be doing drugs. You can't be uh, living out here just wilding out. These are the things that are going to have to be in place for you to get this money. And by the way, here's how it's dispersed. And the big key thing here is once your baby is old enough for you to talk to them about these things and they're mature enough to handle it, you need to be talking to them about it and saying, hey, Mm -hmm. here's what happens. Here's what you'll get. Here's what the inheritance is. And here's what this means. And so as long as you're having very clear communication about that, as soon as they're old enough to understand and it not be, you know, there's, there's a maturity here. You're not talking to them about this at eight years old. Okay. But that part's in place. And, you know, the way my husband and I have it, anybody who's part of that, they know and they know what their job is and they know what the situation is. So as much con- conversation as you can have, you know, we're not talking about hundreds of millions of dollars here. So yeah. I think that there's just mm-hmm. an aspect of, OK, like an 18 year old. Yeah, you're not giving them two point five million dollars. You know, I'd probably I I, I don't want to tell you what to do because this is your life. But I would be thinking, OK, they're pro- if I was gone and they're 18, they're probably going to want need money for college. They're going to need money for a new car. They're going to, you know, on and on. I'm going to want to give them money when I think it's time for their first down payment on their home. And then when, in their 40s, I'd love to help them out in this way. So I'm thinking about those milestones in their life. And that's how that money would be dispersed. I'm thinking about when they might have children. I'm thinking about that. So really just... I mean, it's up to you and your husband how you decide this, but... Um. And here's how we did it, and uh, I want to leave some of our stuff that's is, is, private, but I assigned a trustee who's somebody that um, 
I trust with my life. And he knows me very well. And so, uh, and my wife very well, obviously. And so he is the custodian of this trust. And so if something goes sideways, then he will be responsible for making sure tuition is paid. Because I spent my career working with 18-year-olds and I'm not giving an 18-year-old, no matter how great and wonderful they are, I'm not going to give an 18-year-old $100,000. So they're gonna be, he's going to make sure the tuition is paid. And he's going to make sure that there's a drivable car and there's a difference between what he would say is drivable and what an 18 year old with a hundred thousand dollars would say is drivable. Right. And mm -hmm. ultimately it's released in that way until my kids are reach age X when we'll start to release some of this to them. But the bigger deal for me was finding somebody that I trust in my absence. And I remember a conversation with my wife. Um, and again, when you're talking at Dave's money, when you're talking hundreds of millions of dollars, we're in a totally different conversation. When you're talking our mm -hmm. money, like we have life insurance and a house and a couple of cars and, and you know, a neat guitar that we like, something like that. Um, I said to, you know, who would ever take our kids when they're minors? Um, I want to make sure that we get in writing so they can't do X, Y, and Z. And my wife said, if we don't trust them that much, then why in the world have we named them as the new parents of our kids? And I thought, <laughs> you know what? I'm not going to spend my life trying to legislate life from the grave. I'm going to do... I'm going to make as good a choice as I can. I am going to put it out there and give people wisdom. I'm going to get somebody I trust, and then I'm going to have full peace. I think it's it's trying to control every single solitary mm -hmm. variable right now on the front end here um, that you're going to make yourself nuts. Mm -hmm. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yeah, it does. We just, you know, we've never had a baby before, and we just want to make sure that she's in a good spot, I guess. And, yeah. and any other kids, and it's not a burden. That's, that's the thing that we really don't want to be, uh, the, the people that are friends that have agreed to be grad parents. We just don't want this to be something that makes their life even harder with accepting. Mm -hmm. So flip that around, baby. flip that around, flip that around. Mm -hmm. They said, yes, we would be honored to carry on your legacy and raise your child. If something God forbid would happen to you, don't take away their, um, their heart by trying to lighten that load. There's someone who loves you and there's your friends and they said, no, we'll carry this. Mm -hmm. And so if you then go, okay, but I'm gonna try to make it as light as possible. No, 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 they said, we're in. And so obviously do your part, do your part. Just for whatever it's worth, having sat with people, parents who lost their kids or sat with kids who lost their parents, there is no way to prepare. You think there is psychologically and mentally. It's a burden, mm -hmm. it's powerful, it's awful. Which is why we have a trust set up where at least we don't have to worry about food and shelter and education, mm -hmm. right? So that we have the privilege of just being really, really sad and grieving and going through all that process. And so don't spend all of your energy trying to lighten the load on them. Do do the do your due diligence. Find somebody you trust and say, here's where you're going to be the custodian of this money. This it needs to go. We, they need to have their education taken care of. They might have to buy a bigger van though. Because y'all might have three kids by that point, and they have three kids, and they have to get another van. That's some of that money's going to go to that, right? So mm -hmm. let's sit down and talk to them. You trust them to, enough to take your kids, and then let's put some guidelines on there, and then let's take our hands off. Let's just don't get too too bananas about every single variable. You're going to make yourself nuts. Okay. You're lucky to have great friends, and I don't say you're lucky. You've cultivated those friendships over time, and so good for you. That's fantastic. Uh, Jade, one of the hardest things to do is thinking about who's going to take our kids, thinking oh about gosh. not being here without our kids. And that's a hard thing to, to yes. think through. Rachel, good on you. Mm -hmm. Good parents. Millions Great parents. of people have children and no will. And there is simply no excuse for that other than cowardice and avoidance. Get a will, get a will, get a will. We'll be right back. to Phoenix, Arizona, and talk to Brandy. Brandy, this is The Ramsey Show. What's up? Hey, 
Um, I just was calling because, first of all, I wanted to tell you, John, that um, I have engaged in some pretty destructive behaviors in our marriage um, with money, and I could never figure out why I was doing it until I started listening to you. Um, And so my husband and I have been able to kind of cut off with credit card debt. Um, All of our cars are paid off. We don't have any other debt besides that. Um, I'm so proud of you. He's decided... Well, it's awesome. Thank you. It's awesome. Um, but he has decided to sell his Jeep that um, he loves to pay off this credit card debt. And I just feel really guilty because I know most of it was me making just really resentful and dumb choices. Yeah. He loves that Jeep? He does. How much? Um. I mean, he he's willing to get rid of it. He want he. No, not that. How much does he love that cheap? Um, a lot. <laughs> I mean, give me an example. How much? Uh, I I don't know. I mean, a lot, I don't a lot. Think he loves it more than like kind of a ridiculous part. amount, kind of like almost annoying. How much he loves his cheap? No. No, he's not like a jeeper. Like he doesn't <laughs> like that. Here, here, here's, what, here's what I'm getting at. Yeah, yeah. Here's what I'm getting at. He loves you more. Don't take that from him. Okay. He signed up ride or die with Brandy. And he's he's known for a long time you were hurting. And probably some of the fights y'all had were very tactical things about money and credit card debt. And you have done the hard work to dig in beneath that. What? Why in the world am I spending on this? Am I out of control here? Why when I get nervous or scared or when my mom calls, I spend like crazy, whatever. You did that work. And then he exhaled and went, oh, thank God. Now we got a plan. I'm all in. Okay. And a giant, giant go kart with humongous tires comes way after the woman I love. Okay. <laughs> Sounds cool. good. Guilt is fine. Mm-hmm. Guilt is fair. That's cool. It becomes ugly when your guilt becomes shame. And you know the difference? Um Guilt is, I did some stupid things with money. Shame is, I am stupid and I always will be. Okay. It's okay to feel guilty. You did some, did you do some dumb things with money? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's just your body doing what it's supposed to do. Letting you know, let's not do that again. Remember how that felt? That's cool. Shame is, I'm not going to be able to breathe because as we're cleaning up, other people who love me so much have agreed to participate in the cleanup. And by the way, he signed up for that when he said I do. It's part of it. Okay. Cool. Um, I, yeah, I just was wondering with it too, like, um, so we were two income. We've gone down to one income for me to go back to school because um, we have three kids. And anyway, um, I just, I know that he would have sold his Jeep anyway to make, like, to provide more for them while we were one income. So every time things come up where it's like we're canceling music lessons or something for my kids, I just, like, so the greatest gift you can, the it. greatest gift you can give your kids is a well mom. Okay. By a hundred miles, way more important than a violin lesson, or a whatever, is a mom who has peace inside her chest. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so every time you go to counseling, every time you have to cancel something because you're back in school, every time you are staying up late and you have to miss a ball game because you have an exam the next day. Exhale and think, what a gift I'm giving my kids. Mm -hmm. I'm giving them a peaceful mom, a well mother. I'm giving them warmth and laughter in their home. Because when I get out of school, it's going to be gangbusters. Not, I can't believe I missed this t-ball game, whatever. I promise you, of all the t-ball games they have, they're not going to remember the one you lost. They don't even remember what they ate for dinner yesterday. They will remember... How mom made him feel. Okay. And was mom safe? Was mom anxious all the time? Was mom scared all the time? Or was mom the the one warm place I always knew I could go to? And that's the work you're doing right now. All right. Is that fair? Mm-hmm. Do you believe me? Yeah. 
Um, you don't mostly. have to. My kids are teenagers, so okay. I that makes it a little different. But I think it doesn't. Can they, I? Can they I? Are good at, like, talking, okay. So can I, I tell you one more? Mm-hmm. Take each one of them out for breakfast and tell them age appropriate. I would tell that differently to my 13 year old than I would an 18 year old. But mom's going through a hard season and you're watching your mom become a gangster in front of your very eyes. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, I have a mom that had a hard, some hard experiences, went back to school at 42. And you probably heard that story. Went back to school at 42, first community college class at 42. And then she took another one the next year and another one the next semester. And then she graduated with her PhD at 57. And then she got tenured as a professor at 63. And we all just celebrated her because she finished her last year at Oxford in her 70s. Mm-hmm. She had a whole gangster back half of her life that started when I was a teenager. And it was hard. She missed games. I had to make dinner on my own sometimes. And I wouldn't trade any of it for the, the watching my mom take a machete and head out into a field and carve a path and watching my dad support her all the way. Wouldn't trade a second of that. Okay. Okay. I've lived yeah. it. I've lived it. You're doing the right thing. I'm proud of you. Proud of you, proud right. of you, proud of you, proud of you. It's awesome. Good for Thank you. you. Yes, good for you. Call anytime. We got you. Let's go out to uh, Mike right down the street. Oh, are we going to run out of time here? You think so? Well, we're spending it. <laughs> <laughs> We've spent it. All right, let's run out right down the street. To, well, now we're, now we're even later. Let's try it. Let's try it. Come on, Mike. Just so, just here's some inside baseball. <laughs> the way my my when I look at the call that's coming up, I look directly up at, at James is right behind the screen. So sometimes I reach over to make a call and I see James grimacing as though someone just lit him on fire. And that means, no, John, you're making a terrible decision with your life. <laughs> and so I went to take the call from Mike. Did he shake his head slowly? He looked at me and was like, you're failing the show. <laughs> it's all right. So we'll catch him around. Um, let me circle so back here. So now you and I, we'll just... That's right. Chop it up. So, so let me let me ask you this based on that last call. You have two little ones. Yeah. And I only know by the, the literature, I don't know by personal experience, what I would call the industrial mom guilt complex. Oh, man. You can't be home enough. You can't work enough. You can't be present enough. You can't be um, domestic enough. You yeah. can't be making enough money. The struggle is real. Okay. The struggle is real. I mean, I was, uh, before I came here to Ramsey, I worked from home and it allotted me a lot more freedom to be there for the kids. Mm -hmm. When I took this job, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I know I shouldn't feel guilt about certain things, but I do. I missed my little boy's, uh, what is it? Uh, Teddy bears and tea parties thing at his kindergarten. And I felt (laughs) terrible, you know, um, will there be another teddy bear tea party? Yes, there will. I will be at that one. You know, and George Camel invites us to those at his house all the time. <laughs> but look, I mean, I one of the things I value is cooking meals for my kids. I don't get to cook every night mm. anymore. And that's OK. They also at the same time, my son sits out here behind the glass and he gets to watch his mom talk and help millions of people. Right. And, you know, sometimes I have to tell myself, okay, like this matters, that matters too. All of it matters, the good and the bad. It balances itself out. And when you start feeling out of balance and you start feeling some type of way, you do maybe need to walk in and make some changes and readjust. But it's a constant readjustment, a constant rebalance. You're constantly telling yourself, okay, am I doing enough? Do I need to change this? Do I need to change that? That's just, that is being a mom. I think, I think the more you could chop it up into seasons. What's right for this season? What's yeah. right for the next one? What's right for the next one? And reevaluate, reevaluate, reevaluate. It's hard. Yeah. And when y'all get it right, come tell me and tell me what the secret sauce Somebody is because write that I book. don't know it. How to not feel guilty. <laughs> You'd be a trillionaire. Woo. This is The Ramsey Show. We'll be right back.
Today's scripture of the day is Philippians 2, 3 through 4. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Wow. Talk about Good word. Talk about a word for James. Um, <laughs> the great and powerful meatloaf. Stop. What, what, hey, one of the one of the <laughs> wildest stories of my whole life was hanging out with Meatloaf at Dave's house, Dave Ramsey's house. What? I, I will say this: um, I went home that night and I told my wife. I woke but I her won't up. do that. I said, "Hey, I don't know how to say this, but um, I was just hanging out for the last hour with with Meatloaf, <laughs> just me and him." I'm done. And she, half asleep, she goes, did you find out what that one thing he was, wouldn't do for love is? And I was but like, no. I won't do that. <laughs> oh, he's so amazing. <laughs> amazing. I'll never forget that night as long as I live. Meatloaf said, I know you're looking for a ruby and a mountain of rocks, but there ain't no Coupe de Ville at the bottom of a Cracker Stop. Jack box. Why are you guys doing this to me? They're just trolling me. But I love, hey, I, I love meatloaf. And I asked him, hey, I can't call you like meatloaf. And he goes, no, call me meat. Stop. And I said, I was looking for like a Dan or a Rick. And he's like, nope. Loaf. They call me meat. First name meat, second one of, name One loaf. of the most amazing evenings of my life ever. All right, let's go out to uh, Tel Aviv, Israel and talk to Mike. What up, Mike? How we doing? Hey there. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you so much for calling. What's up? Um, I have a situation that I think is uh, also a financial and also a relationship uh, stuff. Let's do it. Uh, um, my wife comes from a pretty wealthy uh, family, and we've been married since like two, uh, 2018. And uh, basically, we're now you know in control of our own finances, and uh, you know building our own uh, a line. And uh, basically, I'm just uh, struggling with uh, uh, overly expenses. You know, uh, she exp- she expenses her expenses are pretty much uh, higher than her income. Mm. So can I and, like, um, can I ask you some yeah. direct questions that uh, I'm going to ask questions that might sound like a little bit attacky, but this is just me and you. We're friends, okay? Is that cool? Can you hear it that way? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, um, go ahead. And again, I ask this with all due respect, but is she a spoiled brat? She's spoiled, but uh, she also in in a lot of the times, like she were she worked uh, two jobs when she really wanted stuff. And it's not taken for granted. It's really brave to do that. Sure, not a lot of people do that. You Absolutely. know, work from uh, morning to night. Uh, but uh, regarding her. What she wants, what she wants to buy, and stuff like that, she can't really control it. I, I don't know if it's addictive, but hmm. it's a problem. My so she comes from a wealthy family. How wealthy? Um, like a couple of millions. Okay, okay, just a couple of millions. Yeah, so, it's not crazy. It's not okay, crazy so she's just used to you know. A little bit of an upper lifestyle. She can. She's used to eating what she wants, going out when she wants, going to the mall, getting what she wants. And so now you're like, hey, we don't have that kind of money. We haven't earned that yet. You got to cool out. And she's saying yeah. no. Yeah, and we have a baby. We just bought a house like two years ago, just after the pandemic and everything. And it's really crazy. Mike, have, we... you, have you had that clear conversation with her? Have you guys sat down and said... Here's what's going yeah, on. Absolutely, absolutely, okay. and we've been doing that like for far, for four years, even Ooh. before we bought the house. And we've been to therapy for six months. Oh. And I've been working now for two jobs, and she is working uh, one job and uh, taking care of our baby. And uh, basically, my question is: Should I quit the job? Because my job is keeping us like over the water, and if I'm um, Quitting the second job, and when I'm really, really uh, putting a lot to do that, like I'm missing my son, yeah. I'm missing a lot of stuff, and it's really hard because I'm really connected to family, yeah. and I'm missing on hobbies. And, but and you're not making any traction those. for it. Exactly, and appreciation, or and a lot of a lot of times that money that I'm making for savings 
is going to the trash. Yeah. Yeah. Man, this is hard. Um, it's not a money problem, I'll tell you no, that. No, this is not a money problem at all. Um, yeah. The hardest part about being married is that it's every single day, and the hardest part about being married is that it's two people. I have to be all in. And yeah. I would even go How as far. How do I do that? Well, I mean, you've, you've, you've checked off the things that, like, that I would initially tell you to do. Like, your marriage is in trouble. You need to have a direct conversation. And not a direct conversation about... You need to quit spending money like that. A direct conversation like, I'm so scared I can't breathe. Exactly. We don't make the kind of money that you grew up with and you are spending money as though you are. And I'm terrified. I'm missing our son. I'm missing my family. I can't do this anymore. That's a different conversation that is, that is you centric. It's not throwing grenades at her. It's saying, I can't live like this. Here's what's happening inside of me. Um, if you said you've already done that, my guess is that's probably a little more intimate, a little more vulnerable than you probably had the conversation earlier. You all have been talking for years about the spending and getting under control and we should have a budget and you need to quit using credit cards, all that. You've probably done that a million times. The next thing I would tell you is go get a professional, go talk to a counselor. Sounds like you all have done that. Um, I would say, look at the chaos in your lives, but COVID was brutal in your part of the world. And y'all bought a house and now you got a kid and you're working two jobs and you're not home very often. So there's a lot of chaos inside your house. Fair? Yeah, definitely. So there's, there's two paths forward here. One is you have to protect your family finances. And this is a almost never what I recommend this ever, ever, ever. And it goes against all of my core teaching, except in this one moment. If your family finances aren't safe because you have somebody in your um, inside your home that is struggling with some sort of addiction and they are not taking steps towards getting well, you have to protect your family. Meaning, at some point, combining finances is not safe. Okay? If you're in danger of, like, let's say you decided, hey, we make enough money if we were to budget and live beneath our means. We make plenty of money to have a good whole life here without me having to work 20 hours a day and miss my entire child's life. And so as a family, I, we're going to make this decision. I'm out. I'm going to work my one job. You're going to work your one job and we're going to be a two income family and we're going to love our life. And if so doing, she continued to spend and y'all are going to get kicked out of your home. You would have to protect your family by moving money into a, a single account. Okay. You have to start taking okay. protective measures is what I'm saying. Mm hmm. For for now, we're not combining our uh, bank accounts. Okay. Not combined. We're we're separated, and the mortgage is going off on a another account that is uh, mutual. Okay. So is she at this point? Is she just racking up debt on credit cards? Is that where it's? Yeah. 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 Is your is your and name on, is your I'll name give, on the credit I'll cards? Give her a, sorry, say again. Is your name on the credit cards? My name is not on the credit card, but we have loans going out, going off her account for the house, and it's a problem. You know, like she can she can block her own account, and I don't know if it would be any effect on on the house or something like that. But I I can't live like under the pressure that I'm going to lose control yeah. of my life or have, that I'm have you said that pushing forward. Mike? Have you said that? <clears throat> Yeah, of course. Uh, we're also going on a second therapy tomorrow. Okay. Starting tomorrow. So here's here is the, the there's a this Am might I not be a this might not be a popular opinion, questions. but let me hear you say this. Let me let me say this. You can cheat on your spouse with another person. You can cheat on your spouse with a golf club. You can cheat on your spouse with work. You can cheat on your spouse with finances. And I think going to a, a second counseling session and looking at this at your spouse, at your wife, and saying, this ends today. I have ha at my or what moment and or what is, I cannot continue to live under this stress if you continue to not want to be a part of this unified relationship. That's her opting out, and you're just calling the truth as it is. Hard, hard stuff, my brother. Let us know how that counseling session goes, but you need to be direct and bold 
and honest. Hey, it's Dr. John Deloney. If you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey Baby Steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click on the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. That's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started.